Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend in the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Guest Thursday, and uh, this is actually going to be aired uh, June the 13th. And uh, that happens to be uh, Kathy, Linda, and my anniversary. Ah, uh, 54 years, yeah, right? Yeah, so we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll have a good time. And then uh, uh, we're all, uh, I think we've talked about this, but Aiden and uh, maybe even Joshua now, because he was maybe going to Kennecook, maybe not. But uh, mm. we are all headed to uh, Biltmore. Uh, That's for right. July Fourth, and we'll celebrate all our parties and and uh, birthdays, anniversaries, and and all that. But yeah. uh, this is uh, this day that this airs will be our fifty fourth wedding anniversary. So it's kind wow. of wow. Uh, That's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. So uh, we uh, have as part two now uh, with Aiden, Aiden, a grandson who's uh, graduated from Valor High School in Denver and uh, now headed to Baylor University. We talked last time Sick about bears. About Sick his uh, choice of how to how God selected Baylor for him, and he received that and excited about that, uh, getting ready to go down. And uh, and then we talked about tennis uh, with the opportunity he had as an athlete um, that as God led him into tennis, not really being a tennis player, but God gave him great favor just because he's skilled. But he had great joy uh, doing it. Anyone you know second in the state, which is really cool. Uh, so we want to talk uh, another element this year is uh, Aiden's part of a business, uh, uh, basically club that's called DECA, and Aiden will have you describe all that to us. Uh, but uh, it's a uh, process where you, you you join into kind of competition, um, and it lasts several months, uh, ultimately winding up, if you make it, into the uh, international tournament. Which, which we'll talk about because Aiden, Aiden made it. So. <laughs> uh, so Aiden, why don't you just tell us, first of all, what is it, um, what does it involve, and what was your involvement this year in DECA? Yeah, uh, I love DECA. Um, so DECA is a co-curricular business chapter that um, students are pretty much encouraged to involve themselves in competition when it comes to uh, hospitality, uh, entrepreneurship, research, a um, lot of pretty much any type of business scenario you can think of, uh, management, et cetera. Um, all competitions kind of revolve around such things. So there's two main competitions. Uh, one's called a role play. One's called a written. Uh, the role play is very on the fly. You're given a scenario to read, like a business scenario. Uh, you read it in 10 minutes. You take as many notes as you can. You have like a ton of key indicators to actually hit. Uh, and then you go present that to a judge to so say it's like a sinking company or something or a company that wants to make a new advertising campaign for X product. Um, you're able to pretty much on the fly pitch that uh, to a judge and then they evaluate you against other competition. Um, the one that I did this year was the written. Um, mm -hmm. So the written is pretty much a six month paper that you write wow. um, about uh, and, and there's different categories. So there's like innovation plan, startup business plan. Uh, mine was international business plan. So uh, you either create or take a, a current company and you expand it uh, internationally to one country. Um, so that mm -hmm. was international business plan. What I did this year, um, extremely fun. Um, but pretty much the entire essence of DECA is just see how creative you can be and make sure you can pitch it well. Um, mm -hmm. so that was extremely fun. It's yeah, the written is a lot of hard work. It's pretty much a 20 page paper going from, um, the entire overview of a company from detailed financials, any key metrics that you need, uh, customer segments and all the stuff that you would actually need to create this company or expand this company. Uh, it's in the paper. So wow. yeah, extremely. And then do you cool. present the paper or how does that play out? Yeah, you do. So you, you get about 20 minutes to, okay condense as much as you can mm -hmm. um, because you cannot possibly read every single right. detail oh, that absolutely. you put in there. Um, so you do slideshow, but you present it to a judge as well and they evaluate you against um, 
other other kids in the mm-hmm. competition. Yeah, and uh, and so uh, how many how many did you have to go through to get to the uh, U.S. Uh, level, and then and then if you scored there, and they, they it's not single. You you wind up in like the top uh, ten or twenty, uh, and then the top ten or twenty get to go uh, on to the next level. So how many? How many different competitions did you have to go through before you got to the international tournament? Right. Yeah. So um, first of all, you if you're at your school and you want to do it, you actually have to qualify from your school to do it, which is you don't really even have to do a presentation. You just have to make sure uh, regulating everything is OK and they have the space to do it. Uh, so you get through your school, you go to regionals or sorry. Yes, regionals um, and regionals is top three go um, from regionals which is a very narrow window to hit because there's a lot of kids at regionals. Mm. Um, and then you go to state. Uh, so from each each three from regionals while compete at state, the top seven from state um, go to interna- straight to internationals. So uh, since the state competition is so big, um, there was about, there was 300 kids or 200 kids in um, my competition at state. Um, so top seven out of those, out of the, wow. that bunch goes um, to internationals. And then from internationals, you have about, I think it's another, I think it's a thousand kids like per competition Mm. or something, 800 kids per competition. Um, and then they all subdivide into groups, top two from those, each one of those like 15 ish groups go. Um, and then that's, that makes like 15 kids in the finals. Um, and then those guys just rank out. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, what it, was your favorite part of it? Getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> Sense of accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I would say, I think state was fun. It's always good because state's at the Broadmoor in Colorado. Um, oh, nice. Really fun hotel. Um, so it's just good to be with friends. It's honestly one of the best. Like there's a lot of prep and mm-hmm. adversities that you face in DECA. So the friendships that are made there is are some of the most valuable, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And then when he went to international, uh, he won uh, eighth in the world. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank so, you. Yeah, it's amazing. So, uh, again, as we you know look at that, what what uh, uh, spiritual lessons did you learn through that? How did that go in your processing, you know, from time to time to time and and, uh, you know, being able to you had to be in front of different judges and different situations and yeah, uh, lots of obviously competition. Um, what did you learn and how did you approach all that? Uh, I think I learned that w- one of the biggest things I learned, and I would say deck is one of the biggest parts of my spiritual walk, um, over the course of, of the years, not just this year. Um, did you do this all four years of high school? I did this, uh, for two years. So okay. when I moved to Texas and then moved home, mm, um, we, right. they didn't have it at that okay. school. So I moved home and then started a junior year. Um, I, and, so and, this and by, actually, and by the way, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Kathy, last year was his first year uh, mm-hmm. in doing it, and he won uh, top ten in uh, role play in the world. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. So he d- he did all right on that, and that was that was always fun because you you uh, weren't you doing both uh, written and uh, and you you thought role play is like, and I'm not even gonna probably even go go and and do role play right and. God just said, yeah, you need to go do it. <laughs> yeah, that's well, it's actually where I learned the hidden treasures verse. Um, mm, that's it's, great. It's, I was I was sitting in at the Broadmoor that morning, day mm. of. Um, I had I'd done my written and I'd poured like my heart and soul into that written. One mm-hmm. one spiritual lesson is uh, don't put all your eggs in one basket with something that God, <laughs> God doesn't want you to do. Because, um, mm. you know, he gives and he takes away and, and that's via his plan and it's a good plan, but it's scary. Um, mm-hmm. I poured my heart and soul into that written project last year and in the prelims I messed up and I, I just mm-hmm. didn't get it done. I didn't deliver it. Um, but I, and role play, I, I actually, I told my, my mom and, um, uh, Opa and Oma, I was like the day before the entire competition I was like, yeah, I think I'm actually just going to throw the role play for fun just because like, I, I probably, I may not show up or I may just like get it, not get it done on purpose just because, you know, I want, I really want to focus in on this written. Um, <laughs> and I, and I, I didn't 
didn't do well in the written. And I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta do something here. Um, something I never expected to do again with the hidden treasures, uh, mm. ended up and we ended up, uh, being okay. So, um, awesome. that was a really cool testament just to the unexpected plan of God, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, I think the, one of the biggest spiritual lessons God's taught me in, in DECA as a whole, whether it was this year at internationals or last year at state, um, was expect sometimes the unexpected mm -hmm. and be able to adjust, um, willingly to God's plan for you, even if it's not your mm -hmm. own. Um, through the adversities, through the the flourishing moments, um, be humble and winning, be graceful and losing, and be able to ultimately come back uh, from things that that you don't expect, and and really just full consistent trust um, in in the Word of God. And I know that that verse in Isaiah I mentioned last week about uh, the hidden treasures and God mm -hmm. revealing hidden treasures to you um, in unexpected times uh, really is true. Uh, mm -hmm. really is something, a, a very big blessing. I think, uh, God's bestowed on our family and, uh, especially in that time in DECA as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And how did, uh, as you were going through the competition, um, how did you approach, you know, each time, uh, in terms of your level of peace, confidence, uh, joy, working with God so that it didn't become a burden to you while you were in the middle of, of something that, you know, you had to compete in. So how did, how, right. did, how did that, how that work for you? Yeah. Well, I, I did horrible at that pretty much all the way up through state. I did, mm -hmm. I did a horrible job trusting God. I did a whole, I, I was, I need to take everything into my own hands and I need to stress, stress, stress about every little thing. And I, I don't know, Kathy, if you've met my dad, but my dad is a lot like that and we love him for it, but it's, <laughs> it, he's a lot, he's very pinpointing on every single little thing. And, mm -hmm. um, Opa, I think a rich just kind of puts his hands up and says, laissez faire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust <laughs> God with this. So, um, finding the balance between that, I did a horrible job at that through up through state. Um, thank God I made it through state barely, honestly. Um, when I was at internationals this year, I finaled at internationals and I was that, so that was top uh, 20. Mm -hmm. And, and at that point, you're top 20 in the world period. Nothing can take that away. You're either one or 20 or somewhere in between. Uh, right. So you go do one more competition. You just pitch your paper again. Um, and I remember just being like, I never thought I would ever be here mm. ever. Um, I'd never finaled at internationals before. Like I, I'm so shocked that like, I, I'm just here and I'm just grateful mm -hmm. to be here. Like, thank you God that I'm here. Um, and I remember seeing, I remember seeing this girl and she, <laughs> she was also an international business plan and she was going right before me. Um, and she had, I, I had my paper and I had my computer and I had some financial printouts and I was organized and it was, you know, what I thought was really, really good. Um, and she had a whole TV and <laughs> she, she had a whole TV and easels everywhere and clickers for her slideshows so that she could stand back and, um, videos on her thing. And I'm watching this presentation pull, like kind of play out and I'm like, this is crazy. Like this is shocking. <laughs> Um, but even when I saw that, I remember my response was different from state. Mm. I was I was in a joyful state of mind and a grateful state of mind. And it all surrounded itself just around thankfulness um, mm. and Thanksgiving. And I remember just sitting there ready for my presentation, just talking to God, just like, you know what? You got this, not me, um, but I'm grateful to be here and I, I would love this to go well, but I'm just going to, I'm going to trust that you are going to speak through me this go around. Mm -hmm. And I, people up to the buzzer are rehearsing their, um, their kind of performances and their presentations. And at that point, I literally just sat down and I just prayed <laughs> and I stopped praying and I felt mm -hmm. very good about the process, even though I had just seen whatever that right. was. Um, all the crazy stuff that that was and being like, I know I can just do what I need to do, control my controllables and, and give God the rest. Mm -hmm. um, not say, God, please, God, please, God, please, but say, I'm giving this to you, God, and I'm mm -hmm. inviting you into, into uh, my words and my scenario um, and being able to actually do that. I think probably one of the first times I've, I think I've done that well or, or done that correctly. And um, 
I think it was a very important lesson to learn about inviting God into your scenarios and, and then producing a top 10 result is, is just, you know, another, another blessing. And I think that girl actually won, <laughs> I think that girl <laughs> won the entire thing, but um, yeah, just, just inviting God into scenarios is uh, probably the biggest thing that, mm -hmm. that you can do as, as a Christian, as someone who wants to uh, live and develop in the Christian faith. Yeah. yeah. I love so much of what you're sharing is full of all these nuggets that I wish I could yeah. just like, I, I'd love to just pull them all out and flesh them all out. But I just want to highlight one of the things that you said that again, I think this comes back to last time we had you on and you talked about sound mind and how God really taught you that through tennis. And, um, is you're talking about your, you know, just going into that international competition and your heart being postured in gratefulness. Right. I think that's one of those nuggets that I think people really need to hold on to when we have that heart posture of gratefulness. And sometimes we just need to practice it, right? I mean, like literally force ourselves to sit down and, and remind ourselves all of the things that God has done and to posture Absolutely. ourselves in gratefulness and thankfulness. And when we do that, that puts us in our rightful position, humble at the feet of a God who is perfectly capable of carrying out his will. And we, again, our joy is restored, our peace is restored. But a lot of times I think just what you said there, that practice of gratefulness is mm -hmm. key to the sound mind because it does posture us in humility before a God who is perfectly capable. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's I great. Agree. Yeah, DECA was uh, fun, fun to... Uh, you know, watch uh, Aiden work work hard at it I in terms bet. of all of it, and then uh, but go to each competition with uh, understanding and do his best, and then God just gave him favor and uh, thoroughly enjoyed again uh, just being there and uh, the honor you know honor that he had, but mostly that he had peace about it all. You know, and that mm -hmm. was that's fun to watch uh, as someone who's going to you know move into you know college now and business and. Uh, mm -hmm. and we just pray that he'll continue to live that way. Cause that's, uh, if every young kid could learn that at this age, oh, your amazing, life, your life's right? going to be a grand, grand thing. Uh, yeah, and we, absolutely. and we get to be part of it, you know, it's kind of fun of it. Uh, another, uh, one other thing that we'd like to talk about, um, is, uh, and we just went through this, uh, uh, at Valor graduation, um, <laughs> you know, he was honor society and, and they, you know, they give honor for all that. Um, but uh when you're uh in the in the ceremony uh valor gives away various awards uh at different levels and there's like five or six um and then they have the last one which is called eagle award uh, mm -hmm. and um and what the way they do it is um they start talking about the person they don't say, here's who it is. They start talking about the mm -hmm. person and this person, they, they start describing it and, um, I'm listening to it. Uh, I had a sense and I wondered, um, uh, because there were other awards that I thought possibly Aiden would have qualified for, mm -hmm. but, it, but he didn't receive them. But, and so I'm thinking, I wonder if he's going to get the Eagle award, if he's going to get the highest award, you know, and. Uh, so they start describing him and I learned, to, I leaned over to Linda. I said, Linda, that's Aiden. <laughs> mm. I said, they're describing Aiden, you know, and then, uh, and the, uh, oh, man. And, and so, uh, very uh, proud Opa. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, they, you know, they finish it and then say, okay, uh, so would you please come up and receive this Aiden case, you know, and, uh, he got mm. this award and it's, it's the, uh, the highest award was reflecting, the spirituality of the school, uh, yeah. of, it wasn't, you know, it was, you know, he's an athlete and, and he participates in all this. So it's a variety of things, but it wasn't about achievement. It was about character. Mm -hmm. Um, and we were like, that's, that's, I can see that, you know? And, uh, and so he comes up and, and it's all about the spiritual depth of it. So, uh, Aiden, you know, talk a little bit about, um, that's not an award anybody actually aspires to, uh, cause yeah. you, interesting enough, if you did, you wouldn't get it. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's so true. Uh, yeah, but, that's true. But how, how do you think with your time at Valor that this character came out, that it was, it had to be noticeable obviously, cause people, uh, noticed it and then they re they received it and chose you as that. 
Um, and I know you got a cool story about the Eagle Award, uh, about something that happened to you a couple of days before that. So talk, talk about uh, that whole process of, of uh, what it meant to you and uh, how, you, how you just approached uh, school. Yeah. I some I didn't even know what to say when anybody ever asked me about it because I was just like, whoa, that's lost for words sometimes. Yeah. Um, but I was never the best tennis player. I was never the best in DECA. Um, I never had the best, even close to the best grades. Um, I never was pretty much the best at anything well there, there was one thing you were the best at uh oh what's that drumming oh yeah there you <laughs> go. maybe that maybe that maybe, yeah and thank you to you opa I'll, I'll plug you for that amen amen that's the, uh, all that's on you the uh uh you know the the music people uh you know because he he would he would uh aiden would have to play for um uh, there's a, a a organization at Valor that's arts basically, and so it's kids that sing and do all these things, and play musical, and then they have a, a recital at the end, and they need people to accompany them, and so they pick Aiden to play drums for their mm -hmm. deal, you know, and he's got it. How many? You had to learn like what, fifteen, sixteen different things. <laughs> Played thirteen. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, Valor you had to, record. You had to learn them all, but. Um, so we got to, we always got to see that and that was fun. But, uh, this music teacher, you know, came and said to Linda and I, we were, you know, we were just talking and he said, you know, I just want you to know something that, um, he's been at Valor for, you know, 10, 15 years. He said, he said, we've never had, uh, as talented a, a, a drummer as mm -hmm. your, as your grandson, Aiden. Uh, he's the That's best, so he's sweet. the, he's the best, not only the best this year, he's the best ever, uh, in mm -hmm. drumming. And that, you know, it kind of relates a little bit to what he said last last time was consistency uh, is uh, mm -hmm. he 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 put the time in mm. and practice and practice and practice and still practices and and uh, and again and and it's funny to me uh, when you're doing something that is of God, even mm. practice is a joy. And Aiden loved practicing. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and so anyway, that there there was one thing that you were the best. At. I appreciate <laughs> that. You're funny. Yeah. And and thank you to you for being my teacher all the years. Yeah. And yeah. I am great times with you. And yeah, mm -hmm. that was that was a God God's gift in itself that I could just talk about forever. But um well anyway, yeah, I I appreciate that. You're very you're sweet mm -hmm. and yeah, you're cool, man. Um I never being pretty much like the best at anything or being able to like be the top athlete or, um, you know, have a lot of accolades that a lot, a lot of kids have deservingly, like just mm -hmm. watching it all kind of happen. I always just kind of honed in on one thing and that was sacrifice for people and love them well. Um, mm -hmm. and be able to be there for people and be there for teachers and, um, talk, go, go talk to people more than I usually would talk to people because I have one, I, God brought me back to Colorado, um, for a reason. And I'm going to use every ounce of it, even if I, even if they get tired of me and even if I get tired of myself, <laughs> That's um, great. but I, I would go into my business teacher's class every single morning and there were mornings he probably did not want me there, but I would, I would <laughs> ask him how he was how, and he's selling his house. How's your house doing? How, uh, how, how, how's everything going with your family? Um, mm. and just being able to talk to people and, and then I learn from them because they're, they're leaps and bounds more wise than me and, um, and everything. And I think as a, as a Christian, um, a very important Christian lesson is go talk to other people of the faith, go mm. learn from people of the faith, listen to podcasts with, with two wise, two <laughs> very wise people, um, go and go listen to people, go talk to Christians, go, um, you know, go to youth groups, go to, for, for kids, go to, um, you know, church groups for any other adults. I think it's extremely important, uh, that you're surrounded and you surround yourself with a community, um, mm -hmm. that, that values what you value and that, what that pushes you to be better, uh, in the faith, because there's ultimately, um, 
you know, and, and relating back to the award sports are great. Deca is great. Drumming is cool. Love it. Um, but there's one thing that's, there's one thing that's only important to me in this life. And there's one thing that only, um, sir actually surpasses this life. Uh, and that's spirituality and faith in Christ alone. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I, you know, I, I'm, I'm okay with never, uh, with not, reaching D one commit for tennis or not reaching, mm -hmm. uh, you know, first in the world or whatnot. Um, I, I was moved that people were able to, um, take something at least from mm -hmm. me and staff are able to take something from my spirituality. So, um, looking back, if I did not, if I did nothing at Valor, if I never, um, you know, had any single thing. And I, if I just had that, I am a happy man. Um, just to look back and, and say that, yeah, I, I value spirituality and I hope people value spirituality and, uh, and their faith and their strength in the faith first. Um, also it was a big deal of hearing from God. So a little mm -hmm. story about it, um, brief story is that, uh, I was up in the mountains like two days before, uh, our commencement and two days before graduation, I was just, I was just happy to be done finally entering some time <laughs> of rest and, and reflecting on, on kind of what God's given me in these past two years that he, he brought me home for. And, um, I always have struggled with the, the, as a Christian, I, I think I struggle with feeling like I'm doing a good job. I always, I'm like, God, am I, am I, am I doing this right? Am I doing the faith right? Am I, am I treating people good enough? Am I being good enough? Mm. Um, and that's called, I think, I think it's called moralistic deitism. Um, and it's this notion of I have to do and mm. I have to be. Um, and that's not what God ultimately says to us. It's it's we have to put our faith and trust in him and um, our sanctifying and our salvation uh, is in one one thing and it's not our works. Um, mm. It's in our hearts. So um, I was up in the mountains and uh, I was just reflecting on kind of the time that it had been and everything that had gone down in the, and just giving thanks for the blessings and uh, the experiences that God's given me that we talked about last week and talked about today with Decca and just, just really amazing family time and all that good stuff. Um, and I was sitting on this lake and I'm like, I saw this thing flying and I was like, what is mm -hmm. that? That's like a big bird. Like what is, <laughs> um, and I, I'd never seen like, huge birds in the mountains. That's not really something you, I feel like you see in Colorado. Um, and I'm sitting on this lake and I, and it just swoops down. Uh, and it's this giant bald Eagle. And I'd never actually seen a bald That's Eagle before awesome. in real life. And I took a video of it and I'll, I'll probably send it to you after this, but, um, I took a video of it and it was just gorgeous. And it just, was just circling this lake oh, and, that's amazing. and I was, I was just watching it and I was like, that's, I don't know what it is, but it's God. I, I know that's God right there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but I know that that's God. Um, and I, yeah. I took it at that moment, just God smiling down on a, on a good time, um, that we, that we, you know, had ultimately had and, um, God kind of smiling down on the fact that we had finished and just, just a great reminder and sign of God. I think if you look for God, uh, in your day-to-day -day life, uh, you will absolutely find him. Um, mm -hmm. and that was one of those things that a lot of people could have just been like, Ooh, bald Eagle. But for me, I was like, that's God right there. I know that's God. Um, love creation, love, love the creator mm -hmm. more. So, um, but then having two days later, the, the Eagle award, I think it was a cool little sign. I of love God that. showing up and, um, God just reminding me what is important ultimately, what mm -hmm. take, take what's important to you. And, um, if I never play tennis again, if I never do mm -hmm. anything in business, which I hope to obviously, but, um, I know that I carry Christ closely in my heart. Um, and if, if this influences any people at all, if this podcast that you guys run so diligently and, mm -hmm. uh, really amazingly, truly what you guys do is awesome. Um, influences one person in the slightest, um, I hope you all know that it's worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's ultimately the greatest gift that, uh, we can do is be evangelists and, um, influence people for Christ alone. So yep. it meant yep. a lot for yeah. sure. And it was, uh, it was confirmation, um, uh, uh, because we had, you know, he had sent us that, uh, video, uh, a couple of days before. And of course it meant something to Oma per se, but 
Um, she loves eagles. It, it was. I was gonna say God speaks to her with eagles she all loved the time. She eagles right? all so the time. It was. Uh, it was like, whoa, that's that's remarkable. Um, and um, and then when when uh, I saw the eagle award, I said, that's interesting. Um, and then. I have. I wonder if Aiden's going to if Aiden's going to receive this. Then they start describing it, and it was. Um, and I and I got exactly what Aiden got was. God said, um, "Yeah, they recognized him, but this is Aiden's uh, a confirmation from me hmm. of his growing heart of spirituality. This this is this award is from me." Um, and, and, and my confirmation of your character and who you are and what you're becoming. And I wanted you to know that, yeah, they, they gave it to you, but this is for me. And I, and the reason you can know this is I showed you this two days ago. Yeah. Uh, mm, I love I like the that. way you process that. Yeah. I actually haven't thought about that before. So thanks for that. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, of course it's a, it's an honor for us and, and thrilling for us, uh, to, uh, to know the truth of that, you know, that, uh, that's his character. And our prayer, uh, Aiden is for you to, uh, really develop that further. Uh, you'll have all kinds of new, uh, adventures and stories and, and, uh, oh, yeah. uh challenges mm-hmm. coming up with going to Baylor. And, uh, we know that you're ready for him and, and we're excited to have you, uh, continue that and then, uh, have you back and tell and find out the next chapter of, uh, both you and Joshua of, uh, uh, what, what you're going to experience down there and what the privilege of going down the Baylor now and going to a game and, and, uh, just being, hanging out and seeing them, uh, periodically. So it's going to be great. Yeah, oh, you're going to have a great time with all of that. Aiden, yeah. it is so fun, um, to bear witness to what God is doing in your life, yeah, thank um, you, both in thank and you. through you. So thank you for sharing that. So, so faithfully, I want to share just real quick, and I'm sure and, this is probably your school's verse, but as you were saying that, I just was reminded Isaiah 40, 31, um, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will yep. mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And I think just that picture that he given you Eagle award, you know, showing you the Eagle. And then the reminder, this is also what he has for you. He has taught you to wait expectantly on him, yeah. to, to sit, to ask, to seek, and know that he will answer and lead. And he has strengthened you through adversity and through good times, all of it. And then, you know, that whole, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Years ago, I was, I get bugged by things sometimes. And I was bugged by the order of that. I'm like, why would you not put walk first and run second? <laughs> um, and so I was looking at the words and it was so funny because the run was literally just kind of doing, but the walk was the word Yalik and it was to lead. Okay. Mm. And I just That's thought that carried so much gravity to me, you know, they will renew their strength when they're expecting, they're asking, they're seeking me, they'll renew their strength, they'll run, they'll do these things that I've put before them um, and not grow weary and they will lead others and not grow faint because they're strengthened by me. That's an eagle. And that's the picture of what he has given you as you step into this next season. I just think it's beautiful. So I had to share it. It's funny you say that, Kathy. I made a I made a um, Instagram post uh, yesterday, just kind of about graduation and the wrap up of things. And um, I I don't know if it's gonna show up, but this yeah, <laughs> it's kind of blurry. This caption right here, okay, is uh, Isaiah forty thirty one. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so I I love that verse, and thank you, thanks for sharing that. I I, I actually didn't know that. I I questioned the order of of it as well too. I was like, what the heck is going on? Right. So, very cool <laughs> input you have, and I love. God giving confirmation to things because that verse has been on my heart for a yeah. minute. So yeah. thank you guys That's for so what sweet. you do and yeah. um, your wisdom. We appreciate you guys tremendously. And Opa, I love you and love you wow. for teaching me to drum. Kathy, for <laughs> all your wisdom and friendship to us. I'll, uh, I'm sure we'll, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Absolutely. Maybe. Yeah. So, uh, that'd be great. That'd yeah. be great. Yeah. And Father, we just uh, we pray blessing on uh, Aiden and his next mm-hmm. uh, season. Uh, have a great summer. Uh, get prepared to go to college and uh, and get everything settled down there uh, to uh, join Joshua and to enjoy his next uh, mm. phase. And may it be uh, based on his continued heart to follow you and consistency uh, to abide yep. with you and to live it out day by day. And so we pray bl- blessing over him as he becomes a blessing to others. And we thank you now in Christ's name. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Aiden. And um, to our listeners, if you have questions, send them in to us at questions at abide.com. Quest- Questions at abideministries.com. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and just be encouraged as we have one more person in this generation, I think, as you hear the stories of this young generation coming up, following God, abiding in God, and really making an impact in the world. Be encouraged. This is this is the generation that's coming up. It always pumps me up. Yep. It's <laughs> so, awesome. Thanks so much. We look forward to seeing you guys okay. next thanks, time. Thanks, guys. All God right. bless. All right. See you guys. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.